Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and the first filament that I'm pulling out of the Rigid Ink Sample of Filaments bag is some PLA. You know, I've just about used up this entire roll, so it must mean that it's pretty good, right? Well, stay tuned and find out. Thanks so much to my friends at Rigid Ink for sending me this big bag of filament. I can't wait to try them all out. And I decided to start a little bit easy with their PLA. They sent me three samples of PLA, one in yellow, one in white, and the gray is currently loaded up in my uh, select mini printer as I'm testing that out. Now, before I talk about the filament itself, I need to talk about how I'm going to be grading the filament or how I'm going to be uh, comparing all of these filaments. Being the 3D printing professor, I made a rubric. And this is the rubric that I made to grade 3D printing filament. I graded them in four different categories. Printability, material properties, aesthetic properties, and uh, I called it practical, but really I, I'm just comparing price and I've got some fudge points in there so that I can bump it up or down a little bit if I feel that it's close enough to a C that it should deserve it. Uh, with so many points spread out across so many categories, it's very unlikely that any filament is going to score badly. You'd have to fail just across the board in order to not fail. Most filaments are going to succeed somewhere, and so it's going to be common to see scores around 80% in this. Now, what does a 100% score mean on this filament? Which is probably not even achievable, but a 100% score means that this is the perfect filament and I will never print with anything else. It basically is ABS without shrinking, uh, but cheap. You just got the ability to finish prints easily just by putting them in the presence of acetone and get that nice smooth finish, great material properties, but prints nicer than ABS and can do high detail. So just by way of comparison, here's the score that I would give an average roll of ABS. And it gets about an 80%, which I had to pump it up to an 80 with those fudge points, but that's okay. 80% for a ABS because yeah, it has great material properties. It has great chemical resistance and things like that. It also finishes wonderfully, but its ability to do high detail work kind of suffers a little bit. On the other hand, this is the score for regular PLA and it also gets an 80%, but because it succeeds in other areas, great for high detail work, uh, but not so great for post-processing and finishing. It melts at a very low temperature. Its material properties are just not desirable for mechanical or, or other applications. I use PLA for prints that I want to look good, but I don't want to actually be something too functional. You know, something with a mild level of functionality, that's fine, but if it's going to be have to deal with any degree of extremes, I have to switch to a different material. So there you go. Both ABS and PLA get an 80% score on this rubric, but they do so in different areas. So how does Bridget Inc.'s PLA line up? Well, I got it set up in my machine. I figured out the temperature. It prints actually at a lower temperature than I expected, which I'm not sure is a good thing, although it does allow me to hit that glass temperature and bring it back and forth. It makes doing high details and high overhangs very easy. I printed a, a 3D printed decoder ring here with them and despite their being, them being very close, I was able to pop them apart and they throw uh, the two rings just kind of twist freely with each other. I did some high detailed minis from a commission job that I'm doing and the overhangs leave a little bit to be desired but overall they're not bad and uh, here's a, a knight character that I'm doing. They look pretty good with just a little bit of cleanup. However, it is PLA and so there's no chance to finish it other than maybe painting it with, with a two-part epoxy uh, which will make it completely rigid and hard but we'll finish it up. It's just a laborious process and doesn't really add anything to the material properties which again with PLA aren't already great so might as well. But overall it's, it's PLA and it's good PLA. It doesn't go off spec. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. The Rigid Ink PLA gets the same score as regular PLA, and that's it. 
Now, I appreciate getting this rigid ink from PLA, or PLA from Rigid Ink, and it's good PLA, and it does its job well, so there you go. As, uh, as these reviews keep coming, I'm gonna have some more uh, filaments to, to experiment. I got a whole bag of them here, and you'll get to see some cool ones. Well, thank you very much. Thank you again to my friends at Rigid Ink. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.